And welcome to another Bark Bishop show. My guest is a young lady who has an interesting story to share with relation to the wonderful sport of golf, but with a twist. And uh, always interested in business success, I've invited her to share her story. And I'm referring to Alex Anderson, who is the founder of Babes Golf. Hi and welcome, Alex. Hi, good morning. Hey, Thank you. You're most welcome. A uh, San Jose, California young girl have moved, what, just 45 minutes south to Hollister when you were two years old and spent the rest of your childhood and high school years living in the small farming town uh, from there. Where, where exactly was that, Alex? Um, yeah, so Hollister is um, more of central California, so it's just south of San Jose. Hmm. Good uh, farm life, healthy life, huh? Huh. Yeah. But then again, you were pretty young. I mean, um, I think you moved to, uh, you know, you started attending the community college in Gilroy later on. Uh, so <clears throat> life went on a little. I think that was a good move for you. Yeah. So Gilroy was just uh, 20 minutes um, outside of Hollister, um, a little bit more shopping there. Um, <laughs> that's where I went to community college and started studying my degree. Um I first studied dental um, assistant because I thought I wanted to be a dental hygienist. Right. And after working a, a few, a year or two in dental, I decided that wasn't for me. Um, and that's when I, I went back to school and tried again. And I studied skincare and thought I wanted to be an esthetician and got my esthetician license. Mm -hmm. And after working a few months doing facials, I thought, no way. I, don't want to be the one um, giving a facial. I want to get facials. <laughs> so this is kind of when I decided, um, you know, I wanted to go back to school for business and I really wanted to have my own business. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, working full time and paying for school um, and getting my um, associate's degree and planned on transferring. Um, this is the most affordable path for me um, since I was paying for school and um, I studied two more years at community college as I was waiting to turn 24. That way I could qualify for grants and pay my way. Um, I eventually transferred into San Diego State. Well, there's no doubt about it. You were determined, young lady. And then being accepted uh, into San Diego State, this initiated the, the move, of course, to San Diego. And, and that's where you found a business management and, shall we say, entrepreneurship. Yeah, so after getting accepted in San Diego State, I moved to San Diego and I finished my last two years studying business management entrepreneurship, like you said. And still at that time, I was very um, interested in owning my own business and I just didn't know what. <laughs> um, the one thing that stuck out in my mind during that time was uh, one of my college professors had said, if you're going to start a business, make sure it's something you're passionate about. And at the time, I didn't quite understand what he was talking about because I didn't have a passion. Right, right. Well, that's that's an old, uh, I know it's an old cliche, but it's true. I mean, I read that you you had been brought up with a strong work ethic. What, where did that come from? I mean, was it mom or dad, do you think? I would say both my parents, very both hard workers. My mom raised five of us, and um, I was the middle child, but my dad also worked ridiculously hard to provide for our family. Um, he was a builder in the Bay Area and spent a lot of his career commuting and working his weekends. And um, even um, when he had to go to work, we were, he still managed to work on the farm. Mm -hmm. So um, we were brought up with a very strong worth ethic. And, you know, as soon as I was old enough, I got my first job as a sandwich maker at Togo's. And I was 15 years old. I remember having to get a work permit. <laughs> and right. Yeah. So, you know, you uh, never could quite find your niche. So you do know, though, right, for entrepreneurs, young budding entrepreneurs listening, you, you had this burning desire to do something. But what? Um, you know, I wanted to find a passion, something that um, was a combination of all the things that I had learned throughout um, working these different jobs. And I, I found that I really loved teaching and socializing and being outdoors. So it, it wasn't anything, you know, like surfing or scuba diving or tennis. Alex, none of them, uh, shall we say, talked your cork. <laughs> it was none of those. No, but one of my many jobs I held was 
um, at a golf chorus. Um, I worked in the member's executive office and I had no interest in golf. In hindsight, the stereotypical typical golf club member is what turned me off to the game. Yeah. Well, it does a lot of people. And, um, but as the story unfolds and of course, so that would have been a la di da country club, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that I can understand, but life has a, a funny way of bringing you 180. Now, when did you actually get to play the sport? Um, my first time playing golf was a means of pastime back in my town I was from with, there was nothing else to do. I was 29 and um, that's when I fell in love with it. I brought it back to San Diego with me and realized I had no ladies to golf with. So I started inviting my friends and without realizing it, this is when I found my passion. Aha, uh -huh. now we're onto something, right? The light bulb went on, I guess, and boom, as they say, the rest is history. Mark, Babe's Golf has been many things and it's involved it it's um you know really grown with me as an entrepreneur the best things about it is i get to teach and be social and enjoy being outdoors playing this great game so alex so where do you see babes golf this machine where do you see it going then babes golf has the potential of being anything and um, we like to say we're going to Kardashian the shit out of it. <laughs> what would you say, you know, is unique about this business? What's Babes Golf about? Um, what's unique about Babes Golf is we are revolutionizing the game. We're not the stereotypical stuffy golf club. We pride ourselves in making golf welcoming and fun for everyone, even if you've never played. Mm. We don't just play one golf chorus. We play all over Southern California. We do golf trips clinics, some fun social events, mini golf, range meetups, even yoga and golf. It's so much more than just the game. And we want to teach people it's an opportunity to meet new friends and be outdoors and enjoy a fun, active lifestyle. Well, I don't know. It sounds to me very much like a social club as well. Um, I mean, I guess Absolutely. if I was a female and, you know, I, I, I felt that sort of, you know, trying to mix in with the guys on a in a club or on a golf course and woofing at me because I'm too slow or whatever the deal may be because I've seen plenty of this no problems what you do yeah. is you're sort of taking them by the hand and you're you're relinquishing all of that you're taking all that away for women who'd love to learn the game absolutely you're just making women feel comfortable well now looking back Alex is there anything you would have um you know perhaps done differently in kicking off babes golf well, honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. Babes Golf is where it's at today because of trial and error. I've learned so much about myself and the golf industry in the past few years. And I think people will always have opinions about your business. And a lot of the times, it's great advice. But other times, you know, I wish I followed my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's um, wanting to change the game into something that we as women want to be a part of and no matter what obstacles that get in my way, I just take a step back and ask myself, does this align with my vision? Right. And I, I remember that I'm the one in charge of the outcome. So taking personal responsibility when things don't go as planned and learning from it and making sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, it's very courageous of you, and it's a wonderful lesson. You're a young entrepreneur and you've got to do that. You don't listen. Don't listen to negativity. You've got to be absolutely positive and focused on your goal. And no matter what, if you believe in it from your heart and you found the passion, see, a lot haven't got the passion, just doing it for the sake of the money or thinking that's the way, but you know what? You've got it. So what do you find most challenging about being an entrepreneur? I think the biggest um, challenge for me is just believing in myself. That's definitely been the biggest obstacle. It's been an emotional roller coaster. One day I feel like I'm on top of the world and other days I ask myself, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned when you're the one trying to make a change, you're going to always feel pressure and breaking down the barriers and paving the path for women. It's not an easy job. Mm. The industry really does challenge me. And as you know, it's male dominated and very much old school in many places and things get really hard sometimes, but 
um, some, and some people get me and others don't. And I've learned to be okay with that. And it's not for everyone. No, no, you can't please everyone. You never will. Let me ask you this, Alex. And, and I want you to be honest with me. Okay. okay. What have you, what have been your most significant failures and what did you learn from them? My biggest failure, I would say it's not listening to my gut. There's been a few instances incidents where, you know, I had weird intuitions about things. And instead of listening to myself, um, I just, I put a lot of trust in things and, you know, it ends up costing me. So Mm -hmm. I would say just don't trust everything, do your research and always have a positive intent, but more importantly, listen to your instinct. Fair enough. What a wonderful bit of advice that is. Now, what about your biggest ha ha moment? My biggest aha moment. I like to give credit to your wife, Nancy, for my biggest aha moment. (laughs) I call her my babe mom. She's been such a great mentor. And um, I was paired up with Nancy and her friend one day. And we got to talking about my business and my my vision. And she said, you've got to join some local golf clubs and learn how they do it. And I immediately started researching and then I registered Babes Golf as an official club of the SCGA. And it's been the biggest moment for me because the SCGA is taking Babes Golf to the next level. Wow, there you go. Well, the cat's out of the bag. I got to tell you, honestly, the truth. I don't know if she ever shared this with you or not, but I was always a golfer on and off when I could with my career, traveling a lot. But the reality is... uh, she never played the game, uh, found it exceptionally boring, like, you know, without being sexist, a lot of women do. And she wouldn't even watch it on television with me when I would be watching the PGA Tour or whatever, the Masters. And, you know, it used to frustrate me. So I begged her to watch, and so she watched a little. But then I got her to get out one day, and she, she loves a challenge, you know. And once she yeah. started... Uh, that was it. She was determined not to whack the ground and hit the ball. As we say, hit the big ball, hit the small ball before the big ball. But uh, it turned around, and here we go some years later where she's been president of her own golf club. Uh, she's got a better handicap than I do. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, there you go. So you just never know, right? I mean, it's unbelievable. Now, I want to ask you this. Budding entrepreneurs always want to know, Alex, what is it that motivates you? The biggest thing that motivates me is ultimately creating the life that I want to live. Um, Growing up, I witnessed a lot of unhappiness and people complaining a lot about their lives and their careers, et cetera. And I didn't want that. I wanted to be in control of the life that I lived. My ultimate goal was to be happy and finding my golf passion led me right to it. Mm -hmm. Showing others my happiness, which is golf, led into Babe's Golf. And connecting others and seeing them get as excited about the game as I do makes it all worth it. Well, so how do you define success then as an entrepreneur? I think success as an entrepreneur is being able to enjoy every day and feeling like it's not work. So if I was to ask you then, um, what has been your most significant achievement so far? What would uh, what would you answer with? I believe um, so far my most significant achievement was our launch in January. Um, This is when we became the official club of the SCGA. And Mm -hmm. since beginning our membership um, in San Diego, we have over 60 women that joined in six months. 60 women in six months. Gee, and and you're only in San Diego, right? Correct, yeah. So at this early stage of Babes Golf, what goals are you still working towards achieving? What's your big vision? Well, we're still very much at step one. We finally have proven um, our concept here in San Diego, um, and we're all set here, but we want to expand beyond that. Um, My very first goal of Babes Golf was just to meet more women to golf with, and Mm. that's very much still the same goal, but has evolved into this. It needs to be everywhere, so every woman Every woman has the opportunity to enjoy the game. So, Alex, what makes you uh, most optimistic then about the future of golf? You know, it's been hit pretty hard in a lot of ways over the pandemic. Yeah, I think, you know, during the pandemic, golf has actually um, grown quite a bit because, you know, that's the only thing that people can really do is get outdoors and um, be social distancing and Mm -hmm. the exciting, the excitement um, that I see from everyone 
about Bates Golf um, makes me super optimistic. Um, finally, you know, it's something that is really changing the game for women in golf and seeing more women on the green is what I'm very optimistic about. That's good. Well, um, you know, this being a podcast, of course, is going to be on uh, on my permanent site, on, on uh, Mark Bishop Media. But, of course, it goes out to distribution centers all across on various popular podcast platforms. For anybody listening uh, who may be either – Maybe you'll pick this up in San Diego. Maybe you won't. Maybe somewhere else. Either way, you're welcome to chat with you. Is that right? They can call you? Absolutely, yes. And we also have um, our website is www.babesgolf.org. And um, we're on all social media. We have Facebook, Instagram. You guys can follow us. Mm, Good. Um, Yeah, and then you can find more information and membership um, information and a list of our upcoming events on our website. Oh, okay. So um, I'll let people find those and read it on the site itself about all the events and everything else. Uh, just just to double check that site again, uh, uh, folks, it's dub dub dub, which is www.babesgolf, all one little sentence, B-A-B-E-S-G-O-L-F, right? Babesgolf.org. Don't, you know, mix that up for the other one. It's dot org, O-R-G, a nonprofit. Isn't that right? That's correct. Yes, we are a 51C3 and just trying to get more women out there. That's fantastic. Well, you know what? I love it. I think it's a great cause. I think you're doing a good thing. And who knows? Maybe we'll look back in a year or two, Alex, and you're going to be national. And maybe the PGA will wake up and realize, hang on a minute, we should do something to support this. <laughs> that would be a dream come true. Thank you. Uh, fantastic. Well, you know what? You're a young entrepreneur in this day and age in a positive environment, and that's what we need, what with everything else. So Alex Anderson, uh, founder of babesgolf.org, ladies and gentlemen. She's in San Diego. And uh, go to the site, babesgolf.org, and by all means, get in touch with her should you want to. Thanks, Alex. Lovely speaking with you. Thank you so much, Mark. You're most welcome. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.